You know, you have this whole roadmap in your life, right? That you're gonna get the white picket fence, that you're gonna, you know, we bought our house, lived in it for 25 years, and then we were gonna upgrade and get a bigger house. And, and, and this had, every has this vision of what the American dream is really all about. And then you start realizing that the American dream is really about not having all this debt. They just don't know it. My name is Ross, I'm 61 years old. I'm born and raised in Modesto, live here. I'm a project manager for a local business. So uh, my wife and I met when I was 22 years old and uh, we uh, met playing softball because I was a softball coach and she was a pitcher. We got married a couple years after that. We never talked about money. Money was always, as long as we could pay the bills, make it work, it was really never, I always thought I could out earn our, our, our debt, right? And before we were married, we, we bought a house together. Uh, everything we did through, was through debt. Lived the American nightmare, I would, say, I would call it, right? We, ended, we accumulated about $55,000 in debt and we actually paid off the $55,000. It took five years. But one thing we didn't do is we didn't change our behavior. You know, it's, just, it's a nuisance, right? It's just, it's a nuisance to keep, keep, keep up with everything. At that point, we had 12 credit cards and they were pretty much maxed out. And so it was just a constant thing to manage. And we were both sitting there before any of this, uh, her illness happened, thinking, how are we gonna retire in this house? Because we can't afford to be in this house. And then her injury came along, you know. All of a sudden, you know, everything fell apart. We don't know why, just her all of a sudden, she, she felt something in her neck and uh, came in, she actually came in and said, man, I can't wake my body up, can't wake my body up. Uh, we went, we went into emergency and uh, she stopped walking and says, I can't walk anymore. We there, got there 11 o'clock at night and then three o'clock in the evening, uh, morning, they said, hey, everything looks fine. And uh, we think you can go home, see your primary doctor. And we were so in shock, we didn't know what to do. I got her in the car and when I got home, I actually, this is sort of crazy, but I actually, when I went to lift her out, she was dead weight. She couldn't, couldn't walk at all. So I actually put her uh, on, on a piece of carpet and I bragged her into the house. And uh, I can't believe we did it, but she, I, I got her a bedroll on the bed and on, on the floor and she slept there that night. And uh, woke up, uh, that was four hours, five hours later at eight o'clock and she was just rigid, she was rigid. I mean, her body was just uh, bored, right? And we called her primary doctor, he says, call 911, you know, you guys gotta get back down there. There was always, once you, once you have something like this happen, life-altering event happen, you're just after the next, next thing, what are we doing next, where are we going next, what are we doing next? A coworker, we were just out walking at lunch uh, doing our uh, vitality walk, and she uh, mentioned Dave Ramsey. And I, I wasn't even thinking uh, about, about you know our future. We were focused on trying to get Terry uh, better. We, we were going to physical therapy when we came back to Modesto. So we were going three times a week. And uh, she, she mentioned this guy, and I got online. Yeah, it was within a month of her saying that. I actually literally went online and, and found uh, his website, didn't know anything about it, found out who this guy is, right? and. Uh, it was very short time period when we decided to do this. I think it was because we had got to the point that I was just so sick and tired of being in debt and, and being where we were at. And we didn't know what to do next. And we we're trying to figure out what is our, what is our financial future? What, you know, what do we have to go forward? So we knew at that moment we had to basically uh, make a decision. We had to cut our expenses somehow. Uh, we decided to sell our house. It was the biggest chain that was, uh, had weight that was on us, really. So I got online and I, I you know, I went on to find a class. And there was a uh, class uh, close to us here in Modesto. And my wife uh, said, yeah, let's, let's try it. The way it teaches us to pay off the smallest debt first and have that pr progress that we actually, you know, when you get the first one knocked out, wow, that actually happens, right? And I, and I remember my wife along the way talking about, you know, how, how, wow, we're knocking it out, we're knocking it out, believing, now we're believing that we can actually do this. And, and so we started pouring that money on there, and of course, me being the nerd, I got out my spreadsheet, 
And uh, I knew exactly to the month when we were going to be out of debt. And uh, our next goal was to, you know, build that emergency fund because we were on fire to do that. And we just had, a, we had a, uh, something that we were working for. So over the next uh, three months, she was in and out of the hospital and passed away in November of uh, 2015. I think back that she, there was opportunities, plenty of opportunities that when we were getting out of debt and everything, that she could have gone online or, you know, can, you know bought whatever she wanted. But she was really committed to this. I really never realized that, that somehow she knew that uh, maybe she wasn't going to make it. And uh, how she did this for me, did this for me. I remember being uh, in the hospital and thinking about, you know, baby steps. And the month that we, she had gone to the hospital, we had finished, we got to our three to six months. And it was quite amazing because I was sitting there thinking, this is really financial peace. This is what it's all about. This is what we work for. Right? I could be off for six months and not have anything hit me, no, no financial worries. And even my kids, you know, they were trying to balance uh, waiting for their FMLA time off. How, you know, how are they gonna float that little time in it? I was able, you know, able to say, here, here's some money and no worries, right? We got you, we, you know, we, we have that. That's what, we, that's what we've been working for, right? I think that was a huge blessing that we didn't really realize that we were preparing for. You just have that comfort that you can make decisions, the right decisions at the right time and do whatever you need to do for your family and take care of yourself. And when she passed away, I had that uh, life insurance, but it wasn't enough to pay off the house. And, it's interesting because I told God I was going to tithe on that. And it's more than I've ever tithed in my life. And uh, a week later, uh, I was talking to a long-term uh, disability provider. And uh, they said, well, you know she had a life insurance policy with us. And I said, no, I didn't know anything about that. And they said, yeah, we, we've, been, we've had that policy out since she was injured uh, six years ago. We've been paying the, the monthly premium on that and we have a check for $120,000 for you. And I knew exactly what to do with it, right? And I, so I paid off my house. It was incredible because it was like she and God finished this. So, yeah, yeah. I would say that, uh, that financial peace is really what it is. And it, it, it moves beyond understanding. Of, and, uh, and going forward, I mean, I'm on my third uh, financial class now. And to see the changes in people, you know, it is my new ministry. It, it, it was God's called me to do. I, I look at people and I, and I, I can look at them now and, and I know when they're afraid, when they're stressed out, when couples come up to me, I, I, they don't have to say anything. I just, I know it because I've been in their shoes. I've walked in their shoes. I've lived in their shoes. I just want that so much for them going forward, right? That there's that they can have what I have. When we realized that we were going to pay off our debt and it would take 20 months, two years to do it, and I can tell you, there's that moment after the first year. A year is a long time, and then you know that you have another year to go, and you think, how can I possibly do that? That's the breaking point, it's perseverance, right? That gazelle intensity, the reason that you did that, being sick and tired of being sick and tired, you know, realizing that there is a, a plan for you to get out of debt. That, you know, uh, as Dave says, you can wander in debt, but you can't wander out. And I would tell you that it's, it's so much more worth it than you could ever understand. God's got a plan. Things don't just happen. There's always a reason why they happen. You never know what's going to come at you. I look back, and the things that we did was, uh, you know, we paid off seventy-eight thousand dollars, got our emergency fund, and then when she passed away, I was able to pay off uh, the, the house, which is a total of one hundred eight thousand dollars in, in thirty-eight months. Sure, it's an accelerated plan, but it was sort of something that we we knew we needed to do, and we knew what we were going to do. And even though you know life is not predictable, certain things are when you're in control of your money. Let's hear a debt-free scream. This is for you, honey. 